New York Jets, San Francisco 49ers. It is Monday Night Football. Welcome to Props and Parlay today. I'm Andy. That's Andrew. We're both from wagertalk.com. Let's just jump right into it, guys. We're going to go over all the props that we have um, for tonight's game. Um, Andrew, as always, we're going to start with the passing props here. Aaron Rodgers hopefully makes it uh, a few more plays uh, on this opening <laughs> night. Um Pretty interesting. The books have Purdy and Rodgers right there at the exact same number for the passing yards, 236 and a half and 235 and a half. Uh, passing yards for Rodgers and Purdy. Anything interest you in this one? Yeah, it's interesting, Andy. Good to be back with you, man. Uh, feels like it's been too long. It, it's interesting uh, seeing those two numbers be pretty much the same when you've got two different types of quarterbacks. And, you know, we always used to talk about the, 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 you know, name surrounding Brock Purdy, everyone calling him a game manager because of the talent he has around him. Uh, you know, that that name tag needs to be slashed because of what he's been able to do over the past few years here. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to throw a curveball at you here. Uh, I catch this exact prop with the Mahomes uh, to start off the season. I'm going to go with the under with Aaron Rodgers on his longest pass completion. And it's under 38 and a half yards is the number that I got down on, Andy. Nice and, job. You, know, you beat the line big time. You, you, you smoked oh, that wow. line. You smoked it. That's, oh, geez. Hey, you, that, that's, you, you did your job, man. That's a good – you, you did it perfect. Yikes. Well, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll say sprinkle. <laughs> sprinkle on that one, guys. Sprinkle on that one. But, but look, you know, at this point, Andy, I, I think that what we're going to see from, from Rodgers is a guy that might be a little bit frustrated – because a guy that uh, I'm a Packers fan, of course, I've watched him for many years. He's not going to want to ease himself right back into the offense. This is a guy that's going to want to step right back in. He's going to want to flex his muscles, show the guy that he is, show that he can lead this Jets team, connect with his receivers deep downfield immediately. Um, but breaking news, you can still have a solid game and throw several 30-yard passes without going over your longest completion. Look at the game Mahomes had the other night. He did not go over his 35 and a half yard longest completion. And, you know, unless you're, you're a team that's constantly airing it out, you can still have a great day. Um, so I did like that one for Rodgers, but uh, obviously the numbers moved there. Um, and then real quick, Andy, I'll just say Brock Purdy for me uh, is just a completions guy. You know, I've got a list at home, pen and paper, the old fashioned way. And I just have a few quarterbacks that I have for my completion guys. Some of them are on bad teams like Daniel Jones, he'll be utilized at some point this season. But sometimes you got guys like Brock Purdy where you get 17 and a half as their number because number one, they've got game, uh, uh, you know, playmakers that can get the ball and absolutely just fly and get in the end zone. So he doesn't need to throw the ball that many times. And you also, of course, have guys that run the ball uh, as much as they do. So uh, he went over this number in eight of his last 10 games. 17 and a half is light to me. I'll go over Brock Purdy with his completions. And again, it's 21 and a half now. So uh, I, I like that one. I, I like that one, Andy. He's a guy to me that I think is worth betting on. So um, I like the uh, Aaron Rodgers to not throw an interception. Uh, you know, it's, he's been, it's been well-documented. He, he knows his stats. He pays attention to his stats and he just doesn't take a lot of chances. This is a guy that'll throw the ball away. Um, you know, he's coming off of a big time injury. I, I expect a lot of running uh, from the New York Jets team. So I don't think he's going to throw the ball a ton. And I certainly don't think he's going to put it into, you know, into, you know, big time trouble. Um, San Francisco. I really like the website, sharp football analysis. I love the rankings that they have for like the secondary and the front sevens and, you know, all that stuff. Um, you know, the Jets are, they got Jets ranked second and they got the 49ers ranked 10th for the secondary. So it's a, you know, obviously not breaking news that the 49ers have a good defense, but I think this is an this is a Jets team that's going to attack through uh, uh, through the running backs. So uh, I don't see a lot of risk taking here from Aaron Rodgers. So I'll take the under at a really nice price there, minus one hundred and five uh, to not throw an interception. Um, I think they've got these. Uh, I think they've got the uh, the um, the passing yards kind of kind of in no man's land. Like just having him right, having him right there at two thirty six, two two uh, two thirty five and a half is is pretty interesting. Uh, passing touchdowns, Purdy used to be, remember Purdy went on that run where it was just like every single game he threw exactly two yeah. interceptions, and the books were just like, oh, if we put it at one and a half, you take the over. If we put it at two and a half, you take the under. Um, 
this is a Jets. This is one of the best secondaries in the league. So I I can't pull the trigger on Brock Purdy over one and a half touchdowns. But this is one of those where if you play it every week, you're probably going to come out pretty, pretty ahead at the end of the season. So worth noting too, Andy, we don't really know what we're going to get from the Rodgers offense with the Jets, right? A lot of the handicapping as far as the passing props for him. What are we basing it off of right now? Him yeah. running out with the American flag and then having three snaps because that's that's all that's all we saw from him last year. So, um, there, I mean, whether it, you know, we got a few reports we can look at, but a lot of these types of props with players like him, it's all about the reports. So I'll be interested to see what Rogers does. But a lot of times close games like this, I think, can be good for for overs when passing yards because, you know, they're going to be exchanging points a lot of times. With the bigger spreads, people think that, oh, this guy's going to fly over his number. But a lot of times, once he gets there, you know, close to that, they're going to just run the ball into the ground. But I kind of like taking passing props over with close games like this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was the biggest letdown for fan base I think I've ever seen. The excite, <laughs> like you said, running out of the tunnel with the American flag and the fireworks and the flan. Uh, I have Jets fans in my life. <laughs> oh, yeah. They will never get over that moment. I just remember my friend saying, like, man, he looks so old running out of that tunnel. And then he tears his ACL like five minutes later. <laughs> yeah, his Achilles is gone. Our oh, Achilles, man. yeah. Yeah. Uh, rushing yards. I will tell you, I joked about this Sunday morning, Andrew. I was like, I was like, are we all going to regret not just loading up on Kirk Cousins under three and a half rushing yards coming off of an Achilles injury? He's not running. <laughs> I don't know. Aaron Rodgers under two and a half rushing yards. I don't know if we're going to see Aaron Rodgers taking off and running against the 49ers. It only takes one uh, run, but sure enough, Kirk Cousins at zero rushing yards. So uh, I'll come to you rushing props. Um, what do you think about these? Is that what they call low hanging fruit? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm so just mad take... at myself. I was just like, Kirk <laughs> Cousins isn't running. He doesn't run normally. He's coming off an Achilles. He's not, he's not taking off and running. Um, yeah, rushing props. What do you think about this one? Yeah, so I like uh, Brees Hall over on his rushing attempts. Um, no, me too. I, I, yeah, you've got a Niners team that obviously is pretty good against the run, but their defense overall is good. You know, there's all aspects of their defense is good. But I think... It's important to establish the run. And you see it all the time. Um, what what did we hear even? I'm sure people out there were interested to check out Tom Brady on the broadcast yesterday. What did we hear about them, uh, the Browns yesterday? And, and not comparing these two teams, but you can't be constantly having second and long, second and long, third and longs. But at the same time, it's important to establish the run. And this, to me, is a perfect opportunity to not worry about how many yards he's getting for you. Just worry about the fact that he's getting those touches. If they're on the goal line and he runs the ball in for a touchdown, that counts as a carry for you. So I like that one quite a bit. Um, and it, it's nice to get that plus money. You know, Andy, the, 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 the chalk on props, whether it's minus 120, whether it's minus 115, it all adds up. So it's really nice when you can get even money uh, on a player prop like that. And I got to go with, uh, with Debo over on his rushing yards you, you know you look at the number there i think it's light i think you look at the consistent volume that he gets and the best part about him you want to talk about attempts he doesn't need a lot of attempts he's going to get this probably with like one trick play with one or two nice plays he'll use his speed to get past and i, I wouldn't be shocked to see the niners open the playbook up and utilize him in different ways um, but I think my best one that I would say is Brees Hall on his attempts. I don't really want to worry about the yards for him. I, I I had that written down as well for my favorite rushing prop was Brees Hall over. Like you looked at his game log and, you know, he, he a lot of last year, you almost you just kind of have to throw it out the window. Like no Aaron Rodgers. I mean, they were just getting obliterated in some of those games. So if you're looking back at last year and you're going, well, wow, he really didn't have that many games where he went over this one. Um, and then they have the ridiculous one where they gave him like 37 carries in the final <laughs> game of the regular season, meaningless game. Uh, so I'm with you. Uh, I think they want to protect Rodgers. They want to keep the ball away from the 49ers. So I would I would anticipate a lot of running. Um, I know the Jets are pretty high on uh, what Br uh, Braylon Allen. Uh, that's, the I believe, the rookie backup uh, for him. I, I think it's a big rushing attack uh, from them. I, I, I almost wonder if uh, Rodgers under attempts. Uh, would be, you know, would be a good one. But you're always kind of playing with 
danger there if they're behind or you know it's you get a bunch of attempts like on the last drive of the game or the last one of the first half and all of a sudden it sails over um yeah but i I, i'm i'm with you i i I can't do it because it's christian mccaffrey but isn't there a chance they protect him and he only gets like nine or ten carries tonight isn't there a chance that they use Debo or they use Mason or, 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 you know, whoever they end up coming up, you know, coming away with, isn't there a chance that, that this under 71 and a half is going to look pretty good? Or do you think they just throw caution to the wind and just give them all the carries? I, I'm, I'm on the fence. I really am. I think, I think you're going to look, I think we're going to look dumb either way. <laughs> there's, there's a chance <laughs> that uh, he either goes way under or way over. Well, Eddie, when I look at Christian McCaffrey and when I was looking at the Brock Purdy pass completions prop, he was a guy that I'm including in a handful of those completions to get me over that with Purdy. So he can have a really successful game for you. And he's a guy that it will drive you crazy if you have his rushing yard prop and he puts up 45 yards with the receiving game and and it would not shock me whatsoever for him to be catching three or four yard dump off passes and somehow not really having his day on the ground. So I could definitely see that. I think that sometimes we talk about correlated plays. I would think that that kind of correlates. You know, when I'm betting on Brock Purdy over on his completions, I'm hoping he's involving his backs as well. Yeah, I mean, look at that jump in the, the rushing to the rushing and receiving. You know, Christian <laughs> McCaffrey's rushing is 71 and a half. His, his rushing plus receiving is 112 and a half. So uh, quite a bit there. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't think I have anything else for uh, rushing props. If you guys could do us a quick favor, just hit the like button. Take a second while you're watching this. Hit the like button. It helps algorithm out. Uh, leave us a comment. If you don't have an amazing comment, uh, just post there who you think wins the game tonight, 49ers or Jets. Just put that in the comment section. It really helps us out. Let's wager just talk. No, we're doing a good job for you guys. Um, also, just be careful. It's Monday Night Football. You don't have to go crazy. Let's practice good bankroll management. Uh, we, you don't have to play every single play that we have a lean on. In fact, Andrew and I will tell you if the, if we have official plays. We do not play all of these, you know, with our own money, but we do go through each category. Hopefully, help you guys. Uh, if you're on the fence about a play, hopefully we can give you some information or a lean. But you know, very clear, Andrew and I are not playing every single one of these. We're talking through them. All our official plays are at wagertalk.com. Those are where all of our official plays that go on our record are. So I want to make that very clear. When we talk about these plays, Andrew and I are not firing off a million bets on this game. 15, tonight. 20 we, bets tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and on one game. So we recommend that you guys kind of do the same thing. Uh, so we, we want to make sure that we are enjoying ourselves and we don't have, you know, too much of our bankroll at stake. So mm-hmm. uh, Andrew, real quick, tell everyone what you have up at wagertalk.com. Andy, it's a primetime Monday Night Football uh, prop pack uh, right now. And I actually have a promo code going, and it's AM39. So we have a great promo code, I think, expiring to our promo going at Wager Talk for three days for 49 bucks. I'll do you one better for everybody out there. AM39 will get people three days for the price of one for $39. But Monday Night Football prop pack, uh, I did not mean for it to work out this way, but uh, some of my favorite props uh, are in tonight's game, so I'm looking forward to it. And for people out there, props are a very much long-term game for me. So I very seldom will have a big play, a best bet 4 or 5%. I will have the occasional 5 uh, but a lot of it's 1% and 2%. We're playing the long-term game. If I'm going to be a... A little bit higher volume one day. I'm going to have a handful of plays. You guys can expect a 1% or 2%. We're not trying to crush it in one week. We're trying to long-term make money in the prop game. Love it. Love it. Uh, I don't have any official plays up for clients uh, right now for this game. Uh, mostly because we're focused on our 5% play of the week. Uh, this is our famous cross-sport parlays. Happy to be bringing them to the public. Uh, I got to tell you, nobody really... Knew these, uh, or at least nobody paid attention to when we started doing them. But over the course of the last couple of years, uh, they've become really popular. Um, we're 18 and 7 for plus 26 units the last three months. We've hit our last couple 5% cross port parlays. They are just fantastic. Um, I just I just love them. They're a big part of our bankroll. Um, they're a big part of our clients' bankroll as well. Uh, so I'm happy to see that more and more people are jumping on board and we've got our 5% play that is up this week. I know it's NFL. I know it's college football, but man, are there plenty of other ways 
uh, to pad the bank roll and bring money in. So uh, we've got 5% cross port parlay. That is up right now. I encourage everyone to go get that. Lock it in. Let's go back to some of the props here, Andrew. Let's jump to the receiving props here. Um, a lot of big names. Uh, I mean, my gosh, like this is, it's crazy. The Jets, you don't really think about it, but man, what a fantasy football delight this is. Like I, you yeah. call McCaffrey, Samuel, Garrett Wilson, George Kittle, I'm sure is on every team. Is there any of these receiving props that you like? How about uh, Kyle Juszczyk in the receiving yard department? I mean, Love is it. he not our guy or what? I mean, this is a guy. If you're not on the train, everybody out there, hop on the train. And if he doesn't hit today, well, you might have a decent chance of hitting the next time. The big, the biggest thing here is the number, it has fluctuated up and down. But when you look at it and you look at his targets, Andy, he like, we'll go through it. He's getting at least two targets a game, two or three targets a game. And the thing is, when he does catch it, he's not just catching a two-yard toss. Usually, he's good for, you know, between five to eight yards. If you get two catches tonight out of check, I think you will cash this ticket. Um, look at his his yards. Uh, Super Bowl, 31 yards. Against Detroit, 33 yards. Washington, 23. He cashed this in four of his five games to close out last season. Obviously, bookmakers have changed the number a little bit. They have made adjustments, uh, but I still think it's a really good prop to make, Andy. And you, know, you talk about um, Kittle. I like his reception prop for tonight. I don't necessarily love, like I said, chalk, you know, minus 140. Don't like that when I'm betting props these days. I try and stay away from that. Um, but again, if I'm a completions guy, if I like completions with Purdy, and they have so many talented guys that just have so much speed, whether it can break a guy downfield or whether it's kind of just out of the backfield, he is kind of that comfort blanket. He's a security guy. He's a big presence. He always finds himself open for Purdy. I think he's someone that could get four or five receptions, Andy and not have that many yards. We used to debate that on the show with certain players. Are they a yards guy or a receptions guy? I think tonight Kittle is going to be a receptions guy. Yeah, I, I we're obviously using the DraftKings screen here. And yeah, the receiving yards for use check isn't, it's not available on DraftKings now, but it is available on other, on, on other websites. And I love it. I love that. <laughs> use check at four and a half. The nice thing is there, he always gets like one design to play. Yeah, for he's him like only. Out, yeah, he's like <laughs> out in space and like, oh, it's a design play for use check. Look, you just went for eight yards uh, with an easy cash. Um, I did notice the, the other I, we're, we're at the end when we're done with all the props, we're going to talk about week one. You know, the 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 games on Sunday and Friday and Thursday. Uh, one trend I noticed was there were a lot of um, running backs that went over their receiving yards. We can talk mm -hmm. about a few of them. So um, the books, I think, are kind of pretty vanilla with their with their numbers that's just like yeah let's not it's not a really strong opinion that the books have it's just kind of like here's a number that's kind of in the middle and i think you can get some really good value on the over and use check is absolutely the one um uh that 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 we can use checks another one where <laughs> if they put over half a reception you're over one and a half under like <laughs> it, it's, it's 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 just one of those great props whatever the books put out there you can take advantage of it so um I was also going to uh, look at the longest reception here. Um, if, if you were saying you don't like the, if, if you don't like the under uh, for, or if you like the under for the longest reception, you know, what's interesting is, so Aaron Rodgers, what, what was his longest completion? Like 34, but they got Garrett Wilson at 22 and a half, but Mike Williams mm. at 16 and a half. And like the numbers kind of don't add up there a little bit i guess i was just noticing that going through like the only one that's over you know 20 yards that the books have is brandon iu but you go to the quarterbacks and their longest completion is like 35 38 yards um i don't know what the takeaway is there but i mean couldn't garrett wilson get over that and still aaron Rodgers go under his definitely his, like, it's kind of like a middle situation um, I don't know what you think. Look at about Xavier those. Worthy. Xavier Worthy uh, for for the Chiefs, right? Like w whenever I was presenting that prop to anybody, whether it was on Wager Talk today, whether it was when I was on Sports Grid, 
like the uh the, the Mahomes under people were all calling me crazy and I knew it was kind of like I'll be honest with you it's definitely one of those plays that was kind of fun for content because you're going to get kind of people worked up like are you going to take an under on Mahomes but a- a- again if you look at these guys and, and Teddy's response to me when I said about I was listing what all these guys numbers were for their individual stuff he goes well Andrew those are their individual numbers each. Doesn't mean the one guy can't go 10 yards over his, you know, longest reception. But the thing is, is these guys could still have fantastic days. They could still have a great day at the office. And the thing is, it's not accounting for yards after catch. Like some of these guys are so athletic. They design plays for them to catch a 22 yard play, but they're going to explode for 20 yards after that. So I'm interested and you pulled that up, Andy. I will say one that kind of sticks out to me, which Kind of a unique one here, I'd say, potentially, is Juwan Jennings. He's mm. someone that I'm not really rushing to the window to bet on. But when you pull up this type of play, I think that he's someone that might we might not hear his name announced on the broadcast for a quarter and a half. And then we might hear Juwan Jennings with a 15-yard reception. And then, and then you cash that one. So I don't really want to worry about his receptions or yards. He might be that guy that's just good for the longest. You know, everybody's good for their prop. And that, that might be his prop. I, I agree. I like that one a lot. Um, while we're here, I've got a defensive prop I wanted to bring up here. Uh, solo tackles. It's juicy. It's minus 160. Sauce Gardner under three and a half. He only went over four games last year, and that was when their offense didn't have the ball <laughs> very much because it was, you know, God knows who was playing quarterback. So if I – my, my my idea for the game script the Jets are going to do is they're going to try and keep the ball away from the 49ers with a lot of running and a lot of running clock. Sauce Gardner, they don't throw it to him a lot. Like, what was his season interceptions was like half? <laughs> Just because, you know, they don't – they try and stay away from him. So, uh, this is not a guy that has a lot of tackles. There's, there's a lot of other guys on defense that, that get the tackles. They, they stay away from him. So, I'm just looking at that three and a half and I'm going, okay, if I would have played it every game last year, I would, I would have gone 13 and four. That's a nice profitable looking prop. So that was a, that was a defensive prop um, that I was looking at. Uh, of course, uh, touchdown scores. We got to look at it. Uh, McCaffrey minus 170. If he scores tonight, you ain't seeing less than minus 200 for the rest of the season. I'll tell you that. Uh, what do you think, Andrew? Do you have? You have it in you to lay minus 170 on McCaffrey because I will tell you, I I do not. You know, I will say that a lot of times that those plays aren't going to hit those are, are kind of when you have maybe a mobile quarterback that can steal the touchdown from him. We don't really have that here. Yeah. You know, Purdy will, will, you know, he'll tuck his chin in and he'll, you know, bite down on his mouth guard and try and make some plays for his team, but he's not really that guy. But again, you take into account Debo. You take into account, like, you know, you, I don't know. To me, there's too many options. I, I, I like, uh, you know who's, you know who's my touchdown guy in, in this game. And I talked about it all the time last year when we were doing prop it up. Is is Kittle? If I like his receptions, they're gonna find him in the end zone. I I like him to score a touchdown, Andy. I think the the price is pretty good. Um, you know, two plus TDs, thirteen to one. I'm not touching that market. But uh, sign me up for an anytime touchdown score for George Kittle. Nice. I I, I like getting Brees Hall at plus money. Um, he's 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 the bell cow. When they get in close, uh, they're going to rush. Um, the crazy stat was the Jets did not have one running back get a carry from the one yard line last year. They were the only team. Um, but they, I think they had ten carries inside the five yard line all year. It was just a disaster. Uh, but I if if the, if the Jets want to make a statement here about how physical they are up front. Uh, it's running Brees Hall into the end zone. So um, love the explosion that he has. I think he's going to be the 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 bell cow where he, he he doesn't come out when you're around the goal line. So I like Brees mm-hmm. Hall at plus money uh, to get one there. So, all right, guys, that is uh, the props for uh, tonight's game. Andrew, let's talk a little bit about uh, some takeaways uh, that we had. I mean, we had we had good, we had bad, we had ugly. I'll give you my biggest takeaway was um, I think we really, really undervalued Joe Mixon. I I didn't think – I mean, I thought it was a pretty sneaky, nice pickup for the Texans. I, I, I always felt like he kind of – I felt like people were kind of down on him on the Bengals, and I was like, it's not exactly a great offensive line he's running behind. And, you know, he, he, he always got the volume and everything. 
And you know me, I'm, I'm from Indianapolis. I watched, I watched all that. That offensive line, man, they opened a lot of holes. And the Colts' rush defense on paper was supposed to be good. Uh, 30 carries. He's obviously not going to get 30 carries every week. But I like the way he ran. Uh, the offensive line looked really good. And I was watching that going, man, we all whiffed by not taking him in fantasy, in the, <laughs> you know, earlier than that. I've got him in two leagues. Nice. I've got him in two leagues. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. Now, you're, like I said, you're obviously not going to get that kind of volume. But I was, I just, I thought, man, this Texans offense is tough to defend now if Mixon's going to have, um, you know, those kinds of, of running lanes. So Mixon was by far my biggest takeaway going, oh, wow, this is a guy we're going to, we're going to have a lot of interest in. And he didn't have any competition. It was it was him and him only in a close game. So that was uh, that was comfortable to see. What was one of your big takeaways? Yeah, great point. And uh, you, like you said, this weekend we really saw a lot of the rushing and receiving with these running backs. I mean, if you bet a guy rushing yards and they went off on the, uh, through the air, but they're a running back, I mean, you must have been going crazy this weekend. Um, you know, one thing that kind of drove me crazy, Andy, with a play calling perspective, and I actually had no official plays. Um, on, on the side or total, but I did have, um, I had Trevor Lawrence over on his passing yards. And this is not me just being frustrated and, and coming on here to vent about it. This is me being confused by the play calling. You're never safe with a lead against the Miami Dolphins, but apparently the Jacksonville Jags thought they could run the clock out from for a whole half. Like they, they went out in the second half, Andy, and they were like, you know what? We're gonna run the ball and, and protect this lead. Uh, obviously, I'm being a tad sarcastic, but when you look at the fact that he had 21 pass attempts, 12 of 21, I know he's going to be a lot better than that, and there's no there's no denying that. But when I look at the carries here, Travis Etienne, 12, Bigsby, 12. I mean, to me, I thought that the way that they utilized the run game was a bit shocking to me, and it kind of made me think, maybe they're going to be a lot more of a run-heavy team than I thought. Maybe maybe Trevor Lawrence isn't a completions guy for me anymore. Maybe he isn't a yards guy for me anymore. I understand maybe they were trying to establish the run game, keep the ball out of Tua's hands, don't let Miami do what they're going to do. But uh, yeah, I think Etienne's going to be a guy that's going to be more important than I thought. Um, I'm not saying I didn't think he was a value part of that team, but I was a little bit shocked there um, by those numbers. And when we look at at this um, this Broncos team, I'll tell you what, when I go through the list right now and some of the guys for them, I want my money on, on Cortland Sutton quite a bit uh, throughout the next couple of weeks here in the receiving game. And, and some of these guys for Bo Nix, he got his kinks out, didn't look great, Andy, but didn't look horrible. That to me looked like it was a first NFL game type of game. There were some questionable plays through the pick. Could have been another one or two, but he looked confident. And if you're a coach and you're in the coat, you're in you're in the film room today and you're looking over that game, you're like, you know what? He might have made some questionable throws, but man, did he look confident throwing those. And I think that we actually might be able to make some money on Denver Bronco props. And I I, I bet you if you lined up the amount of props that I've made on every single team in my whole entire life, the Broncos might be in bottom three for players that I've looked at. This year, I might be more interested in this Broncos team. Yeah. Um, next takeaway, uh, this could be a very long year for DeAndre Hopkins. He's hurt. Um, I didn't even really know what the injury was, um, but I was watching a, a fantasy football wrap-up show, and they were saying that, like, like the word is, it's, it's like a partially torn MCL that is just not going to heal. Like, he's just going to play hurt Jeez. for, for Jeez. literally the entire year. And then you have Will Levis, who I've just never been a believer in. Um, he's just not that guy. Um, I know he, he, the, the highlight reel was the, you know, the terrible interception where he tried to fling it away. But other than that, I, I, he doesn't look comfortable out there. I know the Bears are great defense, but I was out on Will Levis coming into the season, and he did nothing to change my mind. Um, Andrew, I had a theory going into yesterday. I wanted to fade some really bad secondaries, and I went 3-0 and uh, doing that. I, uh, I took – CJ Stroud to have over one and a half touchdowns because the Colts secondary is not good. That cashed. The big one was Baker Mayfield over one and a half touchdowns against that Washington secondary is going to make a lot of quarterbacks look really good this year. I that had his is... completions and he made me sweat it out. He had 18 <laughs> going into the fourth quarter and he took like eight minutes to get the, the get over 21 and a half, man. But I couldn't agree with you more. 
Uh, the Giants secondary is the other one. We had Darnold. We got plus money on Sam Darnold at over one and a half touchdowns. Um, these bad secondaries, I don't see a change in scheme uh, to where they're going to get there. The C.J. Stroud one was close, but that was because they were just obliterating the, the Colts defensive line. But I, this may be one of those, any quarterback that is against Washington and they hang a one and a half touchdowns, I, it may just be an auto play. I mean, they had like defensive penalties. I mean, they, they had one guy that had two pass interference where he just got absolutely cooked, absolutely cooked and had to just, you know, grab the guy. So those are the, the bad secondaries, man. I, I, I love like, yeah, it was a play on Baker, but it was more of a play against uh, the commanders. And this is like in the prop market, you know, I always talk about this. It's really hard for an athlete or a team to be great every single time. But bad is bad. Mm. Like, if you're bad, you're probably going to be bad all the time or most of the time. I don't see this commander's secondary all of a sudden turning it around and being amazing. I guess stranger things have happened. But, man, those the Giants and the Washington secondary, I will absolutely uh, – I will absolutely uh, be happy to face. And, and you preach that with the NHL, Andy, and you can use use that for NBA. You can use it for NFL as well, where it's kind of like, hmm, I haven't seen, you know, these guys talk about this player before, but I have seen them crap all over the team they're playing against a lot before. And that'll be a common theme for, for us this year with the NFL, like you said, you know, targeting those handful of teams. Um, I, what about young guys? You know, I, I talked a lot over the weekend about, about, I was walking around. I was with a few friends watching. I was walking around the room. Guys, fade the young quarterbacks. I'm telling you, all the young quarterbacks fade them. And besides Caleb Williams, it was actually a pretty good ATS strategy fading those young guys. Um, how about Keon Coleman, though? That guy, to me, looked like a man. He looked like a guy that is 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 going to battle for every single throw in his direction. Josh Allen, I, I don't know what's going on with him and uh, and Diggs like in the uh, in the media talking about each other's relationship in the past, but it just seems weird. Like you're on different teams now, guys. Relax. But he he is hyping up Coleman quite a bit. He's like, I've never had a guy like him before. Like, come on, man. What is this like a drama show? I've never had. <laughs> I've like never Keon had somebody. Um, yeah, I've never had someone on my team like him before. But in all seriousness, I actually like him quite a bit, and. Um, you know, that we all kind of knew that game against the Cardinals was going to be kind of a back and forth, kind of messy style. That's kind of how the Bills are in every game. There are six or more favorites. They find a way to win, but not cover. Uh, but he kind of impressed me. Uh, I think there's a lot of young guys. And you know who I like, too, actually, is uh, Zamir White uh, for the Raiders. You know, they lose 22-10, 13 carries, 44 yards. Forget about the yards per carry, okay? Let's look at the 13 carries because the score, the coaching wasn't great yesterday for the Raiders, and I think a lot of people would agree with me on a lot of those decisions were kind of crazy. But Zamir White might be one of the most underrated running backs going into this season, whether it's daily fantasy, full-long fantasy, or just betting props. If you can get some good numbers on his rushing attempts, that's what I want to look at moving forward. He's a guy that I have isolated and he's someone that is going to get the opportunities with this team. The only thing is, is that you probably want to pick it in a game that you think they might be able to hang around in. If they find themselves chasing a game, then there goes your attempt number. Um, like right off James Connor at your own peril. Uh, like <laughs> it's just, oh, they brought in this new guy, Trey, but he gets three carries. And, and, and I, I'm kind of kicking myself because I was like, this James Connor touchdown was like one of the best props last year. It was always plus money. He always got it. And there he is with 16 carries. Cash is another one. Uh, plays the Rams. That's a pretty decent matchup. Um, it's just like James Conner. I I kind of fell into the hype because I listen to fantasy football podcasts and stuff. There's a few of mm -hmm. them that are absolutely fantastic that can help you with, you know, props and stats and information. And all of them were, were writing off James Conner. And I was like, why? He's he's good. Like like I know they brought in a younger guy, but what you're just gonna shelf uh, James Conner, who was really productive on a bad team last year. So uh, that was um, that was one. Um, uh, poor one out. If you were trying to play overs on tight ends, what was that? Like mm. all big name tight ends were kind of worthless. They're like, blockers. 
They were just blockers all weekend. They were just Dalton blocking. Kincaid, <laughs> one catch. Sam Laporta was nowhere to be found. Um, I, Pitt scored. Mark Andrews. Touchdown. Mark Andrews. Yeah, Isaiah Lively is going to be the number one fantasy pickup, I got to believe. I mean, even Kyle Pitts, he caught a touchdown, but three catches, 26 yards. I, like, I don't know why the, the, most of those tight ends were just – it was re- it was just a really – odd strange day um from tight ends um so uh, that was a that was a, a another take good point good yeah, point maybe yeah. andy that's kind of a buy low like obviously i know it's week one but that could be something we look at in like week three for some under the radar guys that maybe their number gets adjusted a little bit lower that we can yeah. make some money on um i'll, I'll i want to throw one game at you um steelers falcons it, it seemed to me that there was it, there was absolutely zero consensus across the masses about what people liked in that game. This crowd liked the Steelers. This crowd liked the Falcons. And when you look at the props in this one, this this Steelers team is a team that is going to win games when seven of their eight top players go under on their props. Seriously. Like, I think that, like, Najee Harris goes over and Pickens goes over. And every other guy seemingly went under on their props, you know? And it's very interesting to look at. And on the other side of things, going through with the Falcons, Kirk Cousins, 6 of 26, 155 yards, two interceptions. Do you think that guy played in the preseason? I don't think he did. You know, when you look down the list, B. John Robinson, 68 yards, 3.8 yards per carry. I don't know how I feel about that either. Do people understand how serious an Achilles injury is? This, this, This is, I don't know why everyone, oh, Kirk Cousins, yeah, it's like, He's an older quarterback coming off of Achilles. I I, I just, yeah. which makes me a little worried for Aaron Rodgers. I know it was, you know, week one, so we we're at least a full year out. But that Achilles, man, like Achilles injuries, I'm always fading. Uh, one of my biggest bets I made this entire year, Andrew, was the Jamal Hill-Alex Pereira fight. When Jamal Hill tore his, tore his Achilles head surgery and tries to fight Alex Pereira nine months later. It was like, does anybody realize this guy hasn't been training? Uh, You know, can't really move off of that. So, Calf injuries terrify me. That's why McCaffrey worries me. Hamstring injuries. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of hearing that hamstring injuries are four to six week injuries. No, they're not. They're like you may come back after four to six. You're not a hundred percent. I watched <laughs> yeah. Deontay Johnson hobble around. You know, last year after you know his bad hamstring injury. So I just, I don't know, man. I, 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 I think with modern day medicine and stuff, we're always impressed with how quickly these guys come back, but there's coming back and there's coming back at a really, really good rate. There was a great clip of Kirk cousins. If you haven't seen it, it just embodied what coming back from Achilles, you know, injury was like, he had plenty of time in the pocket and he threw one and it, it wasn't even close to getting to the receiver. And you look at his feet, he's not planning. He's like, his feet were just like, there was no strength in him whatsoever. So there's just no way I'm, taking overs on some of these guys coming back um, from some of these injuries. I, I, I got to see it uh, to believe it. So, and uh, I'll tell you the other one that, that terrifies me now is Jordan love. Uh, yeah. I, oh, I, man. They're, I'm terrified. They're going to bring him back too early. Andrew, I, like if they're going to, if they're going to seriously roll with Malik Willis, they're going to be like Jordan, like go to Germany, get the Kobe treatment. Uh, like, like you got to do something to come back. They're going to bring him back too early. And it's just, I, I, I think that has disaster uh, written all over it. So, um, you know, what bugs me too, is that it feels like all those types of injuries happen. Obviously Rogers was third play of the game, but it seems like a lot of these big injuries happen at the end of the game. Mm-hmm. You ever notice that? And I've, maybe it's cause that's when like the crazy pass rush is coming. You got a guy scrambling in the pocket, trying to throw a hail Mary. Like that game was over with as a Packers fan. You just can't win when you score that many field goals. Uh, you need to turn one of those red zone trips into touchdowns. I had a buddy that tried to tell me that the Packers should have been getting blown out. And he's, I'll frame it, he's an Eagles fan. And I was like, we went to the red zone multiple times and just turned them into field goals. If they if they scored one more touchdown, that game is way different. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really worried about that as well. And I'll tell you what, immediately, immediately with love gone, I become a lot more of a receptions guy than a yards guy with a few of those receivers for the Packers yeah. because they're not going to be catching that deep ball nearly as much as they were before. I-, I wanted to ask you, Andy, everyone talks about primetime unders, right? And, you know, we can make whatever we want to make about different things. And we've talked about uh, 
pay-per-views in the UFC having more fights go the distance versus fight oh. nights and all this stuff. We got another one this but, week where it's going to happen again. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I will say unders in games don't necessarily correlate to unders with props. Last night, Lions-Rams, a very, very, very good example of that. Where you're talking both quarterbacks go over their longest completion. I believe both quarterbacks went over their completion prop. You look at Jam you look at Williams with going off in the receiving game. Several players having themselves a day. Cooper Cup, are you kidding me? What his number was? You know what I mean? And and you look at the game, goes under. Some people were tweeting out 53 and a half, Andy. So it's one of those games where it does not mean, guys, if you like the under in a game, the player props are all going to go under as well. Yeah, that was a that was a strange game. I wouldn't panic on uh, St. Brown uh, just yet. I am panicking on Puka Nakua. When you have a knee injury, you try and come back, and it doesn't work, and you, you go out again. I, that 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 knee injury. I feel bad uh, for him, man. Absolutely terrifies me. Uh, last uh, last thing before we wrap up here. Uh, I'm a believer in the Lions uh, rushing game once again this year. That offensive line looked great. Montgomery looked great. Gibbs looked great. That's a great duo. And I'm a believer in the Chargers uh, running game. Um, it's kind of crazy to think that Justin Herbert, as talented as we all think he is, may only be throwing for 150 yards, 200 yeah. yards per game. But that just may be what the identity of this team is. And um, I kind of like it. I liked what uh, J.K. Dobbins and uh, – and Gus Edwards brought to the table much more JK Dobbins. Gus Edwards looked pretty slow. I don't know if he just needs to get back, get into the swing of things. Um, the Baltimore now, chargers. Is that what we can call them? The Baltimore chargers with those <laughs> running backs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the terrifying part though, is, I mean, they're, you know, one injury away from now you're <laughs> now you're in big trouble with them. So ride them yeah. while you got them, uh, ride JK Dobbins in fantasy leagues and props, uh, while you got them, uh, the JK Dobbins touchdown prop may be a good one, uh, moving forward. It looks like that's going to be uh, how they do their attack. So, all right, guys, that is going to do it for it. Don't forget to check out Andrew and all his plays at wagertalk.com. He's got Monday night football prop pack. That is up. I've got my 5% cross port parlay of the week. That is up. We are red hot this year, up 151 units for clients. So we're looking to close out 2024 really strong. Thanks everyone for joining us. Don't forget the like button and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, we've got breakdowns of all the NFL games. We've got college football games. Don't forget about baseball. We're still breaking down MLB games as well. We've got you covered with UFC and Dana White Contender Series as well. Thanks everyone for joining us. Good luck in your place. We'll see you over later.